Good day everyone, this is Pickups and Finds episode 28. In this video, I'll be going through a few things I found for the past couple of months. We're gonna go ahead and start right now. So this is the first video that is actually post-storm damage. Um, the video prior to this one, which was the Switch Ethernet adapter and um, GameCube controller, I actually made before the storm. I just couldn't upload it because of having no power. Uh, now that everything is back to semi-normal, um, this is the first video since then. So I'm going to go through a couple pickups right now. So the first item I'm showing here is this Game Boy Color. It's teal. I believe this will actually be the last yard sale item I'm going to get for this year because it's, it's getting too cold now. Yard sales are done. Um, I picked this up, I want to say, right around the beginning of October when it was still warm enough on a Saturday to have a yard sale. It's in good shape. It's missing the battery door, unfortunately, on the back. But it did come with a copy of Powerpuff Girls. It does work and it was um five bucks so that's a good deal next couple of items I actually got from my buddy tom at work uh, he passed along this copy of uh, danny sullivan's indie heat he actually was selling off a, a good chunk of his game collection he had um a lot of the stuff i had but i saw this in there i didn't have it so i had him hold it aside for me uh he even threw in this neat little case here this is actually from club nintendo you can see the mario hat right on the back um, so that was a, a great, you know, it's a fun game. I, I played this game before, just never, I never owned it. I also have from um, the box of stuff in the last episode, like the Captain Power stuff, uh, my friend Bert had given me. Um, this controller was also in the box, and I think I forgot to, to show it in that video, so I, I figured I would just catch up and do that now. This is a Logitech Wingman. It uh, uses game port, not USB. It's not a bad controller. It's, um, it's a little stiff sometimes. I have a controller similar to this by Logitech. It's not too bad. Um, I'm kind of anxious to give it a try again in um, in one of my older Windows machines. All right, these next couple of items, these are really going back. So the first we have here is, this is called a uh, an insulator. So there's a huge collector's market for these insulators. Um, and that's the glass pot right on top here. This, this little spike would have actually been um, about buried about that deep in a telephone pole right at the top on like the crossbar and you would have had wire kind of wrapped along this so um when i looked this up regarding the model uh this was made roughly uh, i think 1948 is the date code back here it's a model number three uh by whittle tatum and on the back it's also made by armstrong is the uh, manufacturer code these are made in new jersey um like i said there's a huge market for these i'm not getting into insulators i just i thought this was cool uh my wife's grandfather had this he he told me i could have it he had a couple of different ones and he wasn't going to use them for anything he was just collecting me and i guess he didn't really need this one so he passed that along to me uh he also uh I gave this so this uh, in a similar function um you would have uh this is from like a um a hardware store at the time in like the 50s and 60s and you would have screwed this into wood uh, on your house in the wall something like that and you would have run wired through the hole here possibly looped around um just to keep it off of metal and, and the wood and you know keep it safe uh this would have been probably for power wire maybe even like uh fencing wire like a, like an electric fence on a farm stuff like that um this one would have been primarily for telephone telephone telegraph uh, that kind of wiring. They actually still use stuff like this. It's not as elaborate. It's a little more plain nowadays. But if you you know look up on a telephone pole on the the highest wires where like the really high voltage stuff is, there is something with a similar function to these isolators. They're just a little different now. And the last few things I got I actually got from Sam over at the Wood Green Game Room. Um, he had some games he was going through that he passed along to me. We have uh, Quake Three Arena, a copy of Half Life. These are for the PC. Uh, Diablo 2 and Diablo 1. I've actually never really played Diablo, so I'm kind of excited to, to give it a try. I played a little bit, but not enough to really get a feel for the game, just kind of in passing. Um, the other thing he passed along to me, which I'm excited about, is this. So this right here is a Commodore 1702 display. 
um, this would have primarily been used with the Commodore 64, which is, of course, this guy right here. Um, so, yeah, the Commodore 64 was the computer. Now, these did not come with the Commodore. Uh, you would have bought this separately um, from the machine itself. Um, the Commodore, I, this one's mine. I already had this one. Um, this would have been, um, you bought this in a box, had the cables and stuff with it, and you would have plugged it into your TV. But if you wanted to get the... The premium experience for a 64 you would have got the 1702 uh, which connected this via a chroma luma connection which is pretty much standard to like s video nowadays once i pick up the proper chroma luma wire for my 64 uh, i'll demo that for you guys do thank sam over at woodgreen game room um, i will put a link below to his channel um, in my description um, he's a great guy great channel go ahead and give him a sub and if you actually check out uh, one of his latest videos about his crt collection this 1702 is the exact same one that was in that video uh, my biggest memory using the 1702 is actually not with the Commodore 64. Um, when I was in high school, roughly 99, 2000, we actually used um, the Amiga 500 with the 1702s via, I'm guessing, composite um, to uh, use Deluxe Paint on them and learn the computer animation function of Deluxe Paint. As you can see, I do have Centipede hooked up to this via this uh, Atari flashback. One, because I love Centipede. Two, because... Centipede has a really awesome demo mode in this version, especially for an Atari. So that is everything from this episode of Pickups and Finds. Um, let me know what your favorite thing is down below. And if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. I always appreciate that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.